Welcome to Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom podcast. My name is Mumpulu Giluruma Mohobe. Our objective is to enthuse, inspire, energize, and empower entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs of all stripes here in BW and beyond. We do so by inviting these entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs into our makeshift studio. Sometimes we call them to the restaurant, sometimes we go uh, to our studio and we ask them to share their experiential knowledge, their experiences and their expertise. And we ask them uh, as many questions as we can aimed at empowering you also as a viewer. Dumelang uh, this is Mumpulukiluruma Mohobe. Welcome to the Nuggets of Wisdom. As always, we do our best to bring you impactful, life changing business information with which you can uh, improve your, your lot and apply in your life one way or the other. We're going to talk about the business of dentistry. We're going to talk about the pros and cons. And my guest is just the person for, da- for that job because she's also going to give us an international perspective. But before I bring her in, her name is Pel Muruti, but before I bring her in, um, please do me a service of just striking that uh, subscribe button. Please subscribe. We need your support. We need your subscriptions. Please, please, please. As a belief, doch. Um, Dr. Pel Muruti, welcome. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Um, do you just want to share with the viewers a little bit about yourself in terms of your background and introduction? Yes. So my name is Dr. Pearl Muruti. I am a dentist based in New Zealand. But before that, I'll give a little bit of my educational background. So I grew up in Silibi Pigwe, studied um, Bachelor of Science the first two years at University of Botswana. From there, I moved to New Zealand, where I did my five years of Bachelor of Dental Surgery and became a fully qualified dentist there. I also have a special interest in cosmetic dentistry, where I do botulinum toxin, where I do things like Invisalign. Invisalign is clear braces, um, where I do... Mm. um, (coughs) Invisalign... You look at me now. Oh, okay. (laughs) (laughs) Invisalign um, and... Currently, I'm, I've been doing training. Just before I came here, I had an exam for IV sedation as well. Mm. Yeah. What is IV sedation? IV sedation is pretty much, they call it dentistry for chickens. So it's like uh, where you, you are put to sleep a little bit so that the dentist can work on you mm-hmm. if you're scared of the dentist. Okay, it's yes. a very big word. I've never heard it before. <laughs> and in terms of uh, the number of years it took you to acquire your proficiency? Yes. Um, Seven years. So I did two years Bachelor of Science uh, Foundation level at University of Botswana. Then I did five years at the University of Otago in Dunedin, New Zealand. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, at what point did you decide, this is what I want to do, teeth? I want to just focus on teeth. Teeth. Um, Actually, it's a funny story because I never actually wanted to do anything with medicine or sciences. Growing up, I wanted to be a lawyer. Mm -hmm. Then, obviously, family kind of sways your way into this is better. Mm. <laughs> so after I finished uh, Form 5 at Silibi Pique, I observed a few doctors, dentists, and pharmacists. And dentistry is what stood out the best for me. One, the work-life balance. Um, unlike doctors, you're not on call all night. And also just the fact that you could give back somebody a smile is what, what won me over. Mm. Yeah. 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 Now, in terms of uh, industry experience, where have you been and, yeah. and uh, how, what have you done? Yeah, so I have been working as a dentist in New Zealand for the past almost six years now. Um, I worked in the southern parts. So New Zealand is two islands, North Island and South Island. Mm-hmm. I lived in the South Island for seven years. The first five years was university and then actually three years was just working in Christchurch and also in a small town called Temuka. And then now I'm in the big city in Auckland Mm -hmm. uh, where I'm working there in a cosmetic Is it in the north or the south? It's in the north. Okay. How how are they connected, these uh, Uh, islands? 
So there, you have to take a ferry between the two, mm -hmm. or just fly to the How other. How long does it take to get from one to the other? From one to the other. I mean, the flight from Christchurch, for example, to mm -hmm. Auckland is about an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you're driving, it's about ten hours. Then you have to take a ferry with your car oh. and everything in there. The ferry takes how long to cross? It takes about three hours. Okay. Yes. And um, you, 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 you. So you've been a full time dentist uh, working for yourself so i'm i'm working as a contractor mm -hmm. uh, meaning i am self-employed but working in somebody else's company mm -hmm. um so what that means is do you want me to break it down yes in terms of what it means okay so in new zealand the, your first year of work they'll encourage you to be an employee an employee that means your boss is responsible for everything that happens in the practice, your leave, your sick leave, your payments and everything else. Mm -hmm. As a contractor, that means that for every patient that I bill, um, then I have to negotiate with the owner to say, look, I want either 40% or 45% of whatever amount that I've billed a patient. Mm -hmm. And then I'm responsible together with my accountant in terms of paying uh, GST and tax. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How does it work on the medical insurance side or the uh, uh, medical aid? Um, it's a bit different. Medical aid isn't really like huge back in New Zealand. Most people pay by cash. Uh, so there is a, a, a medical aid company called Southern Cross, uh, which will then pay us directly. Or mm -hmm. some, It depends on what the practice has agreed upon. Mm -hmm. Or... Um, the patient will pay and then they'll claim back from them. Okay. That way, if I build the practice, we don't have any issues of, oh, well, the patient hasn't paid yet, so I can't pay you. Okay. And the turnaround time is usually pretty quick, a day or two. Okay. Yeah. So take us through a life, uh, you know, a day in the life of a, of, 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 you know, a contractor, you know, a doctor. Yes. Mm. Um, so... It's something that I've had to learn because it's very different growing up in Botswana than moving there. It's very different. You get you decide whether you get paid weekly or fortnightly. Um, so I get paid fortnightly at one practice. I, w I work at two and then weekly at another. So I would say I determine my hours. So I can say, look, I want to start eight till six or I can say I want to work nine till ten, nine till one. And that's it. And however many days I want as well, that's absolutely up to, up to me. Um, a day, it's really it's the same as any dentist, except for the billing part mm -hmm. and also invoicing the practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So say, for example, my typical day would be coming in. I, I always go to work 20 minutes beforehand to look at what I have during the day. And that helps me to just plan out um, each patient as they come, whether it's for for consultations, extractions, the crowns, depends on the work really. Mm. But you try to mix the day up, nothing is ever the same every mm -hmm. day. And then at the end of each day, then you do what you call um, daily sheet, where you print out the number of patients you've seen, how much you've invoiced, and then you just file it. Yeah. At the end of the week, then you just bill the practice. Okay. Mm. Does an average dentist spend the whole day just the people's mouths wide open? Yes. Is that what it is? <laughs> yes. And, and how is it? I mean, it's... It's fun. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's fun because you don't ever see... You see different personalities every day, mm -hmm. which is interesting. Some people are more outgoing. Some people are more quiet. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just an art of trying to work your way through it, mm -hmm. which is why I decided to, to do IV sedation for patients who are very anxious, they're scared of the dentist, Everybody thinks you're scary, but mm. look at me, right? <laughs> yeah, you look harmless enough. Wait until you grab that drill. <laughs> it's really not that bad. Yeah. Yeah, but that's pretty much what we do all day. Mm. But it's just different procedures, which mm -hmm. is which I love. It's nothing is ever the is same. Is it true that you can tell a person's personality just by looking at their teeth? Mm, not necessarily, but you can tell certain habits. Mm -hmm. I can tell a coffee drinker or a smoker, I can tell a whole lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, and what would you say is the fun part of being de in, in dentistry? Um, for me, it's when you, for me, I, I enjoy when I start work with a patient 
and just that build up of the relationship the more I see them mm. and the end of the relationship say when I finish that treatment and just that follow up mm. so for example um, say you come in as my patient right to a meeting for the first time for the first for some people the first thing is you don't really trust me I'm a new person you know, you don't know me, but then we build that relationship mm. and you come with me with your expectations. Mm. Am I able to meet them? Are they realistic? And that kind of stuff and just working together to mm. as, uh, to achieve the smile that you want mm. is what I think is interesting. I've noticed that your teeth are exceptionally white. <laughs> what do you do to make them so extra white? I just brush and floss every day. <laughs> is it? Yes. There must be another trick. <laughs> I haven't done any cosmetic work on myself. Uh -huh. Yeah, I've just been blessed with mm. nice teeth, I guess. Okay, <laughs> all right. Now, um, working as a contractor, mm. what, what does it mean? Does it are there any documents to be signed, and what do they, what is provided for in those documents? Yeah. So working as a contractor, it's good if you're doing it the right way, but it can also land you in trouble pretty quickly. Um, for example, um, because I'm responsible for paying my own tax, that means that when I get paid, it's heaps of money. And mm. it's very tempting because it's like, oh, that's a lot of money. But Every some of two it, weeks. Yes. Uh -huh. But some of it is for tax. Mm -hmm. So I file my tax and my GST every six months. That means that I have to be good with setting money aside for tax. Right? It's normally a huge chunk. Yeah. What it's percentage? 33%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, New Zealand charges 33% for tax, and then they've got something else called GST, which is 15%. Mm -hmm. But GST is good because you can claim some of it back. For example, when I fuel my car, um, I can claim some of it back mm -hmm. when I do tax returns mm -hmm. for going to work and, and the commute and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for me, I've got a, an accountant who I pay monthly. And then he's to keep track. To keep track, yeah. So he's got access to all my accounts, mm -hmm. and then he does all the coding and stuff. And when I do, say, I go for a course, then I'll let him know this is what I did, this is how much I spent because it's, I'm considered as a business. Mm -hmm. um, so whatever I do, then I can just bill and just claim mm -hmm. it back through tax. Okay, I guess I, I really want to know. What are the special things about a contractor mm -hmm. that you know that you, you you have to requirements you have to meet mm -hmm. versus an ordinary ten, dentist? Dentist, okay. Compare and contrast, as it were. Yeah. <clears throat> so, an ordinary dentist say I'll compare because I've been both. Mm -hmm. My first year of work, I was on a salary. I wasn't too worried about how much, how many patients I see in a day how much time I spent, if I make mistakes, it's not taken away from my income because I'm just on a basic salary, right? Mm -hmm. When I take time off work, I am not too worried about who's going to pay my bills when I'm away from work, right? As a contractor, I have everything that I do, I have to know that it's going to be able to, to pay the bills, right? Um, so. In a day, if I spend the whole day doing nothing, that means there's no income coming. If I spend the whole day doing heaps of work, that means there's heaps of money coming in, right? So that is the difference. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, then I'm responsible for what I've said as well, tax mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and also managing if I get sick, what's going to happen. I have to account for those days. If I'm on holiday like I am right now, um, what's going to happen in those days when I'm away from work. You mentioned that with, with regard to a dentist, you, you're fully responsible. Um, I mean, with, as, as, a, as a, I understood you to be saying that as a contractor, you are responsible to the point where you can maybe theoretically be sued and you have to be much more careful. Is that correct? Um, not in New Zealand, not necessarily, because whether you are an employee or a contractor, you are held by the same guidelines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you are accountable either way. Um, so that's not necessarily a difference. The difference is, as an employee, what I've noticed in New Zealand is if you're working as an employee and you're doing some, some dentists will make you like the own the practice owners will make you do a whole lot of work but underpay you 
just because it's you've signed a contract. Mm -hmm. This is how much you're going to get per year. That's it, mm. right? Whereas if you are a contractor, then you get to bill. If I'm doing work that's worth 100000 then, you know, I get a lot more. Mm -hmm. Whereas whether I do $5 worth of work or $100,000 worth of work as an employee makes mm -hmm. no difference to my salary. How easy or how difficult is it for Botswana to find employment in New Zealand? Um... That's a bit of a tricky question. Uh, one, because I studied there, I found it a little bit easier. Although, because before you graduate in New Zealand, you have a job already. Mm -hmm. But because we were international students, we were the last ones to get jobs. Mm -hmm. So I kind of just went to New Zealand without a job offer, went back and then went for a few interviews and it was quite easy. Then they just sponsored my work visa until I got my residency and stuff. Mm -hmm. But... There is something called a working holiday visa uh, that people under 35 can get um, to work in New Zealand. And, and for Botswana in particular, are there plenty of them? And, and how are they faring? How are they thriving or surviving, in as the case may be in New Zealand? Yeah, there's not many of us. Um, I know... I know Almost every Motswana there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because you kind of want to stick together. When I first went in 2012, mm. um, there were 19 of us and we were all students. In the whole country? In, or that you're aware of? Yeah. That I was aware of in, mm. the, in the town that we were in. Mm. And then a lot of people, some of them went to Australia, some came back home. Mm. Yeah, just kind of diverse. Mm. And now in, this, in Auckland, we had like a, a meeting not so long ago and there was like 15 of us. Mm -hmm. And a few in Christchurch, a few mm -hmm. in the other other areas as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And would you advise Mutswana to explore opportunities in New Zealand, and why? Yeah, one hundred percent, I would, um, because New Zealand is a very chilled country. It's easy. The lifestyle is easy. Population small, like po Botswana. Yeah, right? population. It's like about how much? Four point something million. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's not many, and they are friendly, so you will get on quite easily. Lots of sheep. Lots of sheep. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I heard. <laughs> Definitely lots of sheep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but there are many job opportunities there. Look, it doesn't matter what kind of job you do, whether you're a dentist, whether you're a caregiver. Mm -hmm. um, whether you do fruit picking, you'll still make a decent amount of money. Mm. But I understand, I have it on good authority, you want to transition back to Botswana. Why? Yes, because it's home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the dream is always to come back home. And also the dream is to have my own practice and improve dentistry in Botswana, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for me, I would want to we definitely want to come back so that whatever it is that I'm learning that side, I can implement in our country as well and promote dentistry, not just as a career, but as an important part of our health as well, mm -hmm. Yeah, which is often neglected. So what's the plan? So my plan is, well, I've kind of been sussing the area around, looking at the market. Mm. Um, is it Khaboroni? Is it Palape? Is it Maung? that kind of areas. I, I don't think I'll be able to give you much more information just yet. Mm -hmm. You want to keep me in suspense. <laughs> Maybe you'll ask me to come back. <laughs> uh, yeah. But, but you, you, are you going to set up something similar here where you have uh, you know, uh, contractors working under you or how is it going to work? Yeah. Um, look, if, if people are open to working as contractors, 100% mm. I would. The reason why that's good is sometimes some people want to, to career progression, right? You want to open your own practice, but you can't afford it. Mm. So if I can branch out and have contractors working for me mm. and have like a lead dentist taking care of the practice, mm -hmm. why not just have them as contractors? It's competitive pay, and then they're kind of responsible for that. Mm -hmm. Business-wise, it's a smart move because that means you don't have to micromanage everything. You've mm. got you know, certain dentists responsible for different mm -hmm. branches. Yeah, but it depends. Some people might say it's too risky. What about the month where I don't have money? <laughs> mm -hmm. What about, you know, if I don't have patients coming in and that kind of stuff? So it's just all about are you able to manage your finances and 
take care of that. Well, how do you handle that that risk that patients are not coming in? How do you how do you market yourself to avoid that situation of a drought? Yeah, um, we've just had COVID, right? And dentists couldn't do a lot. We just I was working like two or three days just doing emergencies. I think with any business, there's always going to be a risk. If you are afraid of taking that risk, then you'll never progress into anything. So, for example, if I had a very good week this week, something tells me maybe next week might not be as good. Mm -hmm. So I just keep my expenses the same. I don't try to say, okay, I've made too much, so I'm going to splash. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So it's just about managing that. And mm. then after you do your tax for that year, maybe you'll have extra on the side, mm. then you can always spend that. The youngsters want me to ask you guys whether there's Zaga in there or various professions. Is there a serious <laughs> Zaga in dentistry? <laughs> I really want to know. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people would say there's serious Zaka in dentistry. Yeah. Um, serious. Mm. There's Zaka, but serious Zaka. Mm. So yeah. so. <laughs> I mean, it's just enough to make you comfortable. Yes. Yeah. But I mean, if you. I take it that there could be one or two dentists who you admire. Are they, are they living the life after yes. so many years? Tell me about yeah. that. Yeah. Um, honestly, there's mm. some dentists who, if you have your own practice, they've got it good. Mm. Cosmetic dentists, they've got it really good. Mm. Yeah, so that's what I aspire to. Mm. Um, not just for the finances, but for the science as well. And just being able to give somebody a new smile. Mm. That feeling, it doesn't beat any other feeling mm. for me. It's mm. just like, you know, when you give somebody a mirror and they're just mm. in tears... For mm. me, that's like an amazing feeling. So mm. that's why I like um, cosmetic. And, and what exactly is cosmetic dentistry? Yeah. What does it entail? Yeah. So I work at a cosmetic dental uh, practice. And what it entails, I, I work at two practices. I'll give you the, the differences, mm. right? One mm. is a cosmetic, one isn't. The cosmetic side is we get a lot of patients who want smile makeovers. I want a Hollywood smile, so your veneers. Um, I'm missing a tooth, but I don't want a denture, which is a removable thing. I want an implant, that kind of stuff. So crowns, veneers, implants, they're quite expensive. They're considered cosmetic. Cosmetic, yes. Mm. And your braces as well are considered cosmetic. So I do Invisalign instead of mm. the old conventional brackets with wires. Mm -hmm. Invisalign is a cl clear removable um, aligner. So that it does the same thing as the it old does thing. exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. the, the best thing about it is if you're out on a dinner and stuff with some friends or you're on a date, you can just take it out, mm. you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and also you can brush your teeth well. And so we've we've noticed that most people from their 20s, mm -hmm. 50s, they love it because mm. they don't have brackets and they just don't feel mm -hmm. silly. Whereas for teenagers, we would probably go towards mm. more conventional brackets just because compliance if they mm -hmm. don't wear the the, the aligners that the treatment won't go as well so that's what we do um so yeah in in terms of the other practice that's not cosmetic mm -hmm. my day at that practice just comprises of maybe cleaning teeth doing small fillings to clean up the decay doing lots of extractions whereas the other cosmetic places we always try to save the tooth that's okay. always the aim all right I've got to ask you about mentorship in the context of your heroes out there. Mm -hmm. Do you have any in the dentistry arena or who you look up to? Um, yes. Yeah. So the good thing with New Zealand as well is they've got like a, the, your first three years of work, you get a mentor. So you get somebody who will, you will talk to about your job, that transition from uni to real life. Because what they teach at uni is not real life. <laughs> <laughs> Too much theory at yeah, uni. Yeah, yeah, and also they select your patients for you, so they'll give you all the nice patients. Real life, you get different sorts. Mm. Okay, so my mentors have been really, really good. I worked with um, a very amazing cosmetic dentist called Dr. Michael Khan, who I learned a lot from. Um, I worked with Goran, who is really good. So, and one of the dentists that I worked for, who I'll never forget for life, uh, Francis. 
my first three years of work because we were in a small rural area. Mm -hmm. That meant to, there were no specialists around. Mm -hmm. So he really just pushed me to go for it. Mm -hmm. Do it. Nobody else is going to do it for you. So, yeah. Okay. Um, the chicken dentistry part <laughs> and bundle that. Uh, yeah. What does it mean? And how does it, what's it called again? Yeah. So IV sedation. IV sedation. Yes. Mm. So... If you're getting an operation, for example, you know, they put you under, right? Mm -hmm. uh, which is general anesthetic, where you are completely sleeping. With IV sedation, we put an IV line mm -hmm. and it just kind of takes away all the anxiety. Mm -hmm. So if you're scared of going to the dentist... So but then you're, you're, you're sedated, you're half asleep, you're unconscious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but then you'll come back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't have to and explain. then you don't have to remember anything about mm -hmm. the procedure. So mm -hmm. it makes... It makes going to the dentist a lot more bearable because a lot of people associate going to the dentist with pain. Hmm. And I'm still terrified of you guys. Oh, I, come on. I, still, I am still, <laughs> honestly. So you need the IV yeah, sedation. Part of it is, is that every time you go, hmm. they find the need to find the sharpest objects to test whatever they're testing. <laughs> That's not nice. No, come they on. just pick you all over. Is, isn't that what you guys do? No, not necessarily. No, you always do it. <laughs> When I go for my checkups, first thing they do. They tap and pull, but it's mm. good. Going mm. for checkups, it's great that you go for checkups because mm. that means we can pick things up while they're early. Mm. Most people are scared because they wait until they're in pain. Mm. And then you put local anesthetic in and the infection just soaks it up and mm. it's a lot of pain. Mm. So, yeah. Why the sharp objects always? With the probes and the yeah. stuff. I mean, what can we do with the equipment <laughs> that we've got? <laughs> yeah. Compare and contrast Botswana and New Zealand in mm -hmm. terms of dentistry. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's very different mm. because in New Zealand, a lot of people can afford going to the private. It's mainly private, whereas here I think we've got our government hospitals and we do have um, private as well. But from talking to a few dentists who are in Botswana, the challenge here is a lot of people rely on medical aid and then a lot of dentists, when it comes to collecting from medical aid, becomes a bit of a problem. Um, dentistry... Why is it in, a problem? They say it takes too long to process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's the challenge that and that And sometimes makes. they knock some things off. You'll yeah, yeah. Them. So you need somebody to approve the treatment that you're going to do. But you are the expert, right? Mm. So why should somebody else have to approve your work before mm. you do it? Normally, if much junior clerk somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Mm. And then in Botswana, dentistry, I, I don't think it's taken to a high regard as it is in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people just say, oh, if it's a toothache, just rip it out, mm -hmm. you know, whereas there's a lot more that you can do to a tooth. You can save a tooth in many different ways. You can do your root canals and you can put a crown on the tooth and you can keep your tooth for longer. Whereas here it's like, nah, it's painful. I'm just going to go to the clinic and just take it out. Mm. Um, how, if you think about it, like how many people do we know who go for their yearly checkups or six monthly checkups and get their teeth cleaned? What can our government in our hospitals afford us? Mm. Very little, very little. And I say this because I grew up here and I didn't have a medical aid. And I've been to like a dentist public and ask, oh, can you clean my teeth? Mm. The machine is broken down. Mm. Or we don't have local anesthetic or we don't have this and that and an average Motswana can't really afford that but also I feel like we don't talk about it enough <laughs> yeah it's just one of those things that people are scared of it they don't go only when they're in pain so it's something that personally I would love to try and change the narrative dentists are not that scary mm. we are nice people <laughs> yeah, actually nice, uh... yeah and we can help mm. and not just in the cities, but in rural areas as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's talk about oral hygiene. Uh, we're going to discuss what you're doing in Takotokwan in a minute, but mm -hmm. I want you to think, spare a thought for entrepreneurs. You know, we, we, we're trying to make ends meet. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's, it's hard. On average, it takes five years mm -hmm. for your business to even become, uh, become uh, profitable. Mm -hmm. um, spare a thought for, for us as entrepreneurs. In terms of oral hygiene, what can we do uh, in the midst of being busy trying to survive? Mm. 
Um, <clears throat> it's really just simple. What you do at home will beat you seeing the dentist for 30 minutes once a year. So watch what you eat. Lots of sugar, lots of fizzy drinks, Coke. Those are bad for your teeth. Mm. So if you feel like I don't have time or I don't have the finances, them avoid them. Avoid sugar, them. sugar, you mean sweets and sweets, everything? Sweets, biscuits, all of that. It's okay to have a treat once in a while, but if you find that you're drinking your Coke, your fizzy drinks every day or every other day... Where does this sugar go? It goes straight to the teeth? It so there's bacteria in our mouth naturally. Mm. When sugar gets in there, bacteria produces acids, and those acids are what causes decay or cavities in our mouth. Mm -hmm. That is why we advise brush your teeth twice every day. At night, after you brush your teeth, right? Mm -hmm. And when you brush your teeth, a lot of people don't know this, you spit, but you don't rinse. Mm -hmm. The reason why we don't rinse the toothpaste is that there's fluoride in the toothpaste that helps to form minerals like, like, around You're our teeth. You're not supposed to rinse. No. So that the toothpaste can stay in there and can protect the teeth against that. Mm -hmm. And so when you're sleeping at night... You're not you supposed to... No, none of that. <laughs> none of that. What are you supposed to do now? <laughs> just brush and just spit. Brush your tongue. Are you going to end up swallowing that stuff? No, not swallow. Just spit, spit it out. You won't mm. swallow it. Oh, okay. It's very, very little. Because mm. that's how it works. It's a topical... Toothpaste is, works as a topical thing. Mm. When you rinse, you're rinsing it out. Mm -hmm. So you don't have those minerals that you need to be protecting your teeth, mm. which is why we recommend just spit. Then when you're sleeping, you've got the minerals reforming and protecting mm. your teeth again against that bacteria that we've got in our mm. mouth. Because we've got billions of bacteria. Settle this debate for me. Mm -hmm. Floss versus toothpick. Floss, always. Yeah, why? Toothpick, uh, toothpick will create spaces or gaps in between your teeth. So it's not very good. And you're poking away at the, at the gum as well. Mm -hmm. So how can I show you? Say this is a tooth, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> These are two teeth. Yeah, yeah. You're jabbing in with a toothpick there, mm -hmm. right where your gum is the gum eventually is going to recede back and you're going to have a little space in there. The more meat is going to get stuck in there. Mm -hmm. Floss is easy. You just slide mm -hmm. it in, make a C shape and just, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, still on the transition. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you just stick it out in, in, New Zealand? in New Zealand? Why do you, why do, why do you, if there's money, mm -hmm. why do you have to come back home? Um, a whole different reasons. Life is not the same um, in New Zealand as it is in Botswana. It's nice, but it can also feel isolating. Um, you don't have your family there. So on days when you're not well, you need your people. Mm. Uh, but you can create your family, are you? Mm, I mean, <laughs> mm. I can, but I, I would prefer to come back mm -hmm. for mainly for personal reasons. But also because in order for me to buy my own practice in New Zealand, it would cost me a million dollars compared to... If I was US to, dollars? No, New Zealand dollar. Which, are like which is like 7.8. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Um, so 780,000 pula. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, no, 7.8 million pula. Ooh. Because it's one million dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, compared when you start here... I Why mean, is it so frightfully expensive then? There? I don't know. It's just very expensive. The but licenses and stuff. The licensing is expensive. But I mean, everybody gets a license easy. It's just similar to buying a house anyway. In different countries, it's different prices, right? Mm -hmm. Buying a million dollar house in New Zealand and you compare it to what you can get in Botswana. My goodness, you would just be like, what? Are you serious? Mm -hmm. Is that like what you call a million dollar house? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's like a two bedroom mm -hmm. apartment. In if you're Zealand. in Auckland. If mm -hmm. you're in Auckland, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whereas if you've got 7.8 million pula. Mm, you can do wonders. You're right. Mm -hmm. And so many businesses that you can do. Mm -hmm. So for me, I would love to just to come back and also just to be able to give back. Not just, I mean, obviously to, to build myself up have my own practices and be able to mentor some people and also to be able to give back to some communities. Speaking of giving back, talk, talk, about, talk to us about oral hygiene fair mm -hmm. in Takatukwai. Yes. Mm. So that was 
pretty amazing. Um, I had an oral hygiene fair. We went to Mahupu. It's a combined junior and senior secondary school. Initially, our our target was 500 students because I was like, oh, there's no way I'm going to be able to afford 500 toothbrushes and toothpaste. So I came from New Zealand with bags full of toothpaste and toothbrushes, had some donations um, from people. Then I made an appeal on BTV and a, a lot of people um, donated. So we were able to donate to 1,400 students there. Mm -hmm. Reasons being, we always have, you know, the what you call it, there's, there's so much going on in the cities, you know, medical people coming in to address people, but how often do we have that in the most remote areas, mm -hmm. right? And then my target is, if you teach them young, they'll always remember it, and they'll be eager to go and teach other people so as what, well. So what mostly are you sharing at these fairs? Yeah, so at the fair I was talking about oral hygiene, how do you take care of your teeth? Uh, brush twice every day, floss, what to avoid. Um, I talked a little bit about inspiring, inspiring them. I came from Silibi Pique. I didn't come from a rich background or anything. Study hard. You can also make it. Um, so it's career guidance. It's mm -hmm. oral hygiene and it's also giving back and donating toothbrushes and toothpaste. Um, there we actually had a boy who said, oh, I haven't had toothpaste in, in months. He's just been using water in his toothbrush. My goodness, it was one, you know, one of those. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so it totally was. Totally finished. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he showed me and I took a picture of it and he's just like, ma'am, look at what I've been using. And I'm like, okay, don't call you me, ma'am, because you're mm. making me feel old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's actually like, wow, you don't realize how much a small thing mm. can mean so much to somebody else. Are you rolling them out, this face? Is this, or is it just to cut the coin? This was my first. Um, fair that I've done, but the aim is to be able to do more. Um, but obviously, it depends on do I have more to give. Don't you have the support of your colleagues in the industry in, in dentistry? Uh, hopefully, someday I'll have I'll have did it. Did you approach them? Um, yes, I've approached a few. I've asked for a few, but it was the first one, so I won't blame them just mm. yet. Mm. <laughs> they mm. weren't able to support. The Most of the support came from my friends who donated quite a lot of money from my New Zealand family mm. um, who donated quite a bit as well. And I also actually approached Ministry of Health, but we didn't have any support. Mm. And they Sad, isn't on, it, sometimes? Yeah, they kind of frowned on what we were doing a little bit mm. because they're like, oh, we need to know what you're doing, da-da-da-da. And then I'm like, I'm happy to, to, to tell you guys everything. So I typed an email. He's like, type an email. We do this sort of thing all the time. We'll be there to support you. Typed an email. I was expecting some donations, but... Mm, but did they at least turn up? Turn up. Yeah. Okay. They didn't know. So typically a fair would last how long? So we were there from just the afternoon 2 till 6. Mm -hmm. So just do the talk. And we had like the village chief there. We had the welfare person there and the local pastor from that area as well mm. and just the kids and just trying to make it as fun as possible questions and answers and then at the end you just donate mm. to them yeah. isn't there also an additional benefit that you draw the kids into the industry into into dentistry yeah, definitely yeah. it is yeah definitely and also it opens your eyes up to what's happening out there mm. when you're in the cities it, it, it's very easy to just focus on self and you, you're not w well yeah. aware of what's mm. out there. Mm. I was approached by a girl who's missing a tooth. I'm trying to find, to connect with some dentist around who can maybe help her. Mm. And it's her front tooth, you know, she can't smile. She's just like this mm. all the time. Mm. And it's sad, you mm. know. Mm. <laughs> Whereas when, if you're in the city, you just go to a dentist, you get your front tooth back. Yeah, yeah, yeah so, yeah. yeah. Future prospects in terms of plans and expansions. Let's mm -hmm. start with the the mobile dental truck yeah. that you are planning. Planning, yeah. So, I mean, God willing, right? I'm hoping to have a mo mobile dental truck which can go out to the rural areas, um, whether we, we would have dentist volunteer to go and help. You can um, park one here in the CBD. <laughs> yeah, we can talk about how much rent you pay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, or, you know, rent it out to the government, talk to the government and say, look, I've got a truck. Mm. I've identified these places. They mm. need a dentist. Let's What's inside the truck? What equipment is inside? Uh, you've got the chair. You've got your sterilization unit. You've got your everything that you need for fillings, for cleaning mm. the teeth. It's mm -hmm. just like a, a normal practice, mm -hmm. um, just that you'll be able to drive around to different areas where you don't have mm -hmm. clinics, yeah. Is that common in New Zealand? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Is that why yeah. you got the idea? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they've got dental trucks for under 18. Most, most dentists in New Zealand don't want to treat teenagers mm. or small kids. Would that imply you have a full-time driver waiting for you? you to move to the next spot or you drive it yourself i mean there's a driver mm, you hire yeah. a driver it's yeah, part of the yeah, deal yeah yeah part of the deal you've got a driver you've got the dentist you've got the assistant mm -hmm. uh, yeah somebody to do the sterilization somebody to assist you and you'd go into those areas okay yeah um now the crystal ball issue what's in it what's the future hold for for Pearl Muruti 10, 15 years down the 10, line? 15 years. Um, 10, 15 years from now, I'll definitely have my own practice. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully a medical center, not just dental practice. Hopefully something with a pharmacy, physio, um, doctors, and not just in one area, different mm. areas around the country. Mobile trucks where we can do doc dentists without borders, kind of like they do doctors without borders, mm -hmm. where I can have. I Is mean, there I've, such a thing, by the way, dentists without borders? Um, no. Okay. No doctors without borders, definitely. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. But I know some some dentists who've gone to the islands to volunteer. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, I'll be able to afford to have some. I mean, I've made so many connections in different countries: Australia, mm. you know, New Zealand, the UK, and can have people come in and, mm. and help our communities. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, how many branches you still mentioning to us? I want us to roll the tape 10 years from now. Yes, how many definitely. And then make a comparison. Putting it out there, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, how many, how many the branches, any, yeah. any, any such branches outside Botswana? Mm -hmm. I, want to, I want to hear all of it. Yeah. So, I want to branch out 10 years, right? Mm -hmm. This is the goal. Khaboroni, Francis Town, Maung, Palape. Mm -hmm. Those are my areas that I'm looking at. Okay. Um, New Zealand, hopefully, I'll be able to partner with someone mm. there and we can open a practice together. Mm. Yeah. And then, um, ideally, I would love to be both countries mm. because I love New Zealand so much. It's mm. become home. I've been there for, yeah. for the past 10 years and it's just such a wonderful place to live. Botswana is home as well, but yeah, probably yeah. let's say four or five practices, a medical center in there as well. Yeah, different countries. I've heard that they're more welcoming of Africans than any other place. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't get to experience that much racism there. Mm. They're very a very friendly nation. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It reminds me of home. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you don't feel more like... Mm. But there are a lot of Africans also. Um, in Auckland, yes. Mm. Yeah, in some cities, like for example, in Temuka, gosh, I think I bumped into one black person. <laughs> mm, yeah, in the seven in years the been years. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Incredible. So, yeah. And I mean, I'm interested in, in a whole lot of stuff as well, property. So that will be in the, in the works 10, mm -hmm. 15 years from now. Okay. Now, um, do you have a question for me? Yes. Mm. I You've do. been waiting for this, huh? <laughs> Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so, my question for you, I better be smart because I only get one question in, mm -hmm. um, is how did you overcome the fear of starting when you, when you first started your first branch into business, entrepreneurship and stuff? Um, it's a combination of factors. I was working for uh, Minchin and Kelly. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I was uh, hoping to become a partner. Yeah. And um, I was raking the cash, eh, the dough, eh? Yeah. Thinking that I'm impressing the partners. Only to find myself getting a letter from them saying, we see you are making the money, we see you are busy, uh, but we think that you are creating your own mini firm within our firm. Oh, my goodness. And we don't think your partnership material. So, 
with a letter like that, yeah. I was incentivized to look for greener pastures yeah. because I could see, and it came at a time when I was still young, yeah. I could see that I, I will, making partner was going to be a bit hard. Yeah. So I then um, partnered with, with uh, Itumelen Sokopolo, who is now a judge of the high court now. Yeah. And we started a, a firm. Mm -hmm. So it was a case of if you don't jump, you're going to be pushed. You know, yeah. so it's better to jump. To jump but yeah. there was there was some trepidation. Mm -hmm. But I just felt that I had it within me because I had I was raking in the cash yeah. from my work. I had I'd worked for four years, and sometimes I was making more partners um, than grab more money than, than the, the partners. partners. So oh, yeah, so yeah. that did, that showed me that. Yeah. So so it helped me overcome the fear. Yeah. This yeah. was in the nineties, by the way. Wow. Yeah. That's impressive. Yeah. yeah. Now. I want you to look at that camera there okay. and leave the viewer there with something inspirational okay. and then also share at the end your contacts. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so something inspirational. Mm. I would say don't, don't put yourself um, I say don't put yourself under unnecessary pressure. Um, believe in yourself always, no matter what other people might be saying around you. Always, always go for what you believe in, what trust in yourself, because you know yourself better than anybody else would. So always go for what you want. That's what I would say. Get rid of the imposter syndrome. I used to be one of those people who would just listen to what other people would say and then not go for the things that I wanted just because of what other people would say. So none of that anymore. Mm -hmm. And um, you can find me on Facebook, Dr. Pearl Muruti, on Instagram, Dr. Pearl underscore M, same as Twitter, Dr. Pearl underscore M. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not accessible on WhatsApp? WhatsApp, yes, WhatsApp, um, plus 6422-691-4779. Uh, but if you go on my Facebook page, my WhatsApp is already linked in there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if you're a dentist and you'd love to give back, please get in touch. Mm. Especially with regard to that mobile... The dental mo truck. Mobile, mobile dental truck. Yes. All right, thank you very much. You're no a wonderful problem. guest. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. That's all good. Cheers. You did Cheers. a good job. <laughs> thank you.